Oh, we finally made it. We're in the end game now. We start with a parody of the 1970s Hulk intro. It's neat due to its accuracy, though it offers nothing of substance to the show itself, seemingly just serving as a dream that Jennifer had. It's interesting to point out that this gives us a glimpse at what a practical She-Hulk might have looked like. They designed her to look dumb for comedic purposes, which Marvel has a bad habit of doing these days, but I honestly can't decide which version is better. If they had actually put effort into this practical version, it would probably look incredible, pun intended. Jennifer is then visited by her lawyer friends in prison. She tries to plan out how to fight back against the evil Redditors, but the new lawyer confronts her about her own case. Jennifer gets to Defensive, stating that she had a normal response to the situation, but the new lawyer states that she isn't normal, and she walked right into the villain's trap. And... huh. This is actually a good bit of writing. Jennifer then learns that she'll only be allowed to leave the prison if she has an inhibitor, meaning her she-hulking days are over. It's also shown that she lost her job due to the scene she made, and since she was only hired to be she-hulk in the first place. The nice thing here is that they don't beat us over the head with obvious statements. The scene subtly explains itself by showing her packing up. Bestie then says this. So I will continue to work here because they paid me nicely. Which confirms my suspicion that she's broke due to bad spending habits. We then see Jennifer getting harassed by the news and media outside her apartment, so she decides to move back in with her parents. And I'm not sure what changed here, but so far this is all honestly good stuff. Her enemies were smart. They knew they didn't need to beat her. All it took was making her lose the slightest bit of control for the entire world to turn on her. She lost her career and her home for doing something that anyone would have done in the same situation. But because she's a Hulk, she gets treated differently. Could this be the one good episode? Jennifer and Bestie then investigate who could possibly be behind the attack. Bestie wants Jen to Hulk smash whoever it is, but Jen insists that they rely on the law to take them down. Suddenly, Jennifer's mom interrupts. <laughs> Please, oh. we have work to do. What, what, don't watch Maybe is this work going to be out of my living room? As soon as I get justice for everything that's <laughs> happened, and I can't do that if you're hovering. Okay, okay. Hey, My goodness, have you learned nothing? You lost everything, yet you still found a way to be an ungrateful bitch. You should be happy that you even have parents. Bestie then stumbles upon a news clip in which the man makes his final appearance. He claims to have dated Jennifer in the past, and describes her as a psycho even before she had powers. It's unclear if he's lying or not, since we literally know nothing about Jennifer's life before she became She-Hulk. Jennifer then looks at the camera to vent her frustrations. It's She-Hulk, Mom! Or was. Which I know is what I said I wanted, but this doesn't feel right. Is this what you guys want? Well, yes. Things happening, you facing tragic losses thanks to your irresponsible behavior, giving you a chance to grow and become a better person, realizing you had a good thing now that it's gone. That all sounds pretty good, actually, from an audience perspective. There's a joke about a narrator. Jennifer Walters is a woman at a new low. She has no more no, fighting. we're not her. doing a narrator. Then Jennifer reaches out to Bruce. After going through her recent turmoil, it seems that she reveres his guidance a bit more now, acknowledging that he was right all along. Good stuff. Unfortunately, Bruce is still lost in space, so she seeks help from the next best thing, that being Abomination. I'm not running from my problems. It's a mental health break. Oh. Uh, no need to get defensive. This is fine. You're actually being reasonable for once. We then cut to Bestie late in the office. She took the embarrassing video that Jen's mom sent her, and used it as bait to get clout from the evil Redditors. No, really. This is the actual plot. This bait was apparently very effective because Hulk King himself instantly responds and invites her to a meetup that's happening in just a couple hours. And apparently this meetup is within driving distance. Well, isn't that just the most contrived thing ever? However, Hulk King assumes that she's a bro. So Bessie enlists the help of the other lawyer. Pug, are you still here? I need a favor. Wait, his name is Pug? Has that always been the case? Jennifer arrives at Blonsky's estate, but he's busy, so she sits around waiting for him. Man. The prop department just loves these abomination photoshops. Meanwhile, Bestie coaches Pug on how to act like an evil Redditor, so he can infiltrate their meeting. He gets inside, and my suspension of disbelief is immediately shattered. There is no way a bunch of Redditors would realistically socialize outdoors, but it plays out pretty much how you would expect it to. This scene has gravity-defying levels of cringe. Females, am I right? <laughs> we just listen to the Redditors spout off talking points that journalists use when they attack the fans, mixed in with things actual critics say about these shows, in order to conflate the real arguments with the gaslighting ones. Pug tries to join in, but catches the attention of... This guy. Oh what? He's an evil Redditor? I had no idea. The twist turns purple when he reveals that he also just so happens to be Hulk King himself. What? I'm so shocked. We then see a glimpse at the presumed Dark Webbers, as a mystery figure constructs a new syringe to take She-Hulk's blood with. 
And it's totally that one bad date. He spent the whole time asking her about her weaknesses. Of course it's him. They then force us to listen to more of these cringe talking points. Is she Hulk better than the Hulk? No. Is she as strong as him? Is she as smart as him? No. no. Take a good look, super fans. This is what modern Marvel thinks of you. I just find it hilarious that she Hulk's main antagonists are a bunch of internet trolls. Self inserting much? I've made this distinction in the past, but it bears repeating since it's topical again. People don't hate your show because it stars a female. There are plenty of beloved female characters in film, in the past, in the modern day, and even in your own franchise. The suggestion that all your backlash is coming from sexism is a wildly dishonest shield you use to hide from any real problems that you've created. You're making a show about a character who is derivative of a much more popular, yet horrifically underdeveloped character. He gets used as a punching bag to elevate his replacement. You frame your show as a self-aware legal comedy, even though every other modern Marvel product is already drowning in comedy. You don't know anything about American law, and your character is a superhero. Therefore, there's an expectation that she would have to do some hero work at some point. You don't read or enjoy superhero comics, so obviously this was never going to work. Your world building is non-existent. Your villains are trash. Your characters barely have arcs. Your writing is painful to listen to. The CGI is embarrassing. Fan favorite characters have been turned into punchlines. And worst of all, this show is just offensively boring. Boring. The hardest part about writing these reviews is to find clever new ways to describe nothing happening. That about covers the general problems with the show. Did I mention gender at any point there? If she was a man, I would say the same thing. And I can prove that because my largest and easily most popular video on this channel is my breakdown of all the issues I had with the male Hulk throughout his entire MCU run. We don't hate your show because of women. We hate it because you people are constantly making crap and it's getting old. Marvel has a massive fan base, one of the biggest in the world, but it's becoming clearer with each new product that the people in charge are sinking the ship. Fans are getting angry because we don't want to see that happen. We just want to see you tell good stories with characters we appreciate. It's really that simple. You just keep fucking it up. And spoiler alert, it's only going to get worse from here. That good start is all we're gonna get. Hulk King rallies all the groupies to their chairs. A member of the Wrecking Crew, presumably Dozer, can be seen in the background wearing the exact same outfit he wore when he attacked Jennifer. Did I mention the show is also incredibly lazy? We cut back to Jennifer as Wrecker tries to offer her help. However, she only wants to listen to Abomination since they had the same struggle. Mmm, thanks. Uh, but I don't think anybody can really understand what I'm going through right now. Except Emil, since he went through literally the exact same thing. Kids, don't take life advice from this show. This is a bad mentality to have. People don't need the exact same struggles as you in order to give you help. Regardless, Wrecker tells Jennifer where she can find Blonsky, and off she goes. Hmm. Kind of miss the chicken blood. Then we cut back to the meeting, where they introduce none other than... The Abomination! Oh boy, if this meeting wasn't contrived enough, it's also taking place in the exact estate that Jennifer is currently visiting, and it's featuring the exact man that she is currently looking for. And this is why you shouldn't allow irresponsible morons to decide a mass murderer's freedom. And what's with the stupid outfit? Apparently Abomination is here to be a motivational speaker, stating vague comments about making sure these unsatisfied men seize their goals. I wonder if this is an allegory for someone else. But shortly into the speech, Jennifer appears, and Blonsky gets frightened back into his human form, and for some reason his clothes still fit. Lazy. Brace yourselves, everyone. This shit is about to go off the rails. Trust me, you're not ready for what's about to happen. Jennifer confronts Blonsky for breaching her trust. He insists that he's doing nothing bad and gives her a fake apology. Suddenly, Bestie appears and tells Jennifer that they need to leave, and Pug exposes the identity of Hulk King. Todd created the site. He's Hulk King. You're Hulk King? Uh, no, doi! To whichever poor editor added in that doi, you are a champion. Hulk King reveals to Jennifer that Josh stole her blood for him. And speaking of, where is Josh during all this? He's never been seen again after sleeping with Jennifer. And spoiler, he's not going to show up anytime soon. Hulk King then injects himself with a chemical made from her blood in order to turn himself into a Hulk. It's just that easy. And for anyone hoping this would be Red Hulk, well, stay disappointed, because he's another green one. Red Hulk is dumb anyway. I don't care what anyone says. Just too many Hulks. Hulk King's motivation for doing this is somewhat vague and unclear. It seems that he's simply just a sexist, and he just hates Jennifer because she didn't have to work for her powers. Typically, when you make an antagonist, especially one that directly mirrors the hero, you'd want their motivation to reflect the hero's personal journey in some way, so that when they beat the villain, they're also achieving a thematic victory at the same time. Or you could just 
not do any of that and just have a villain for villain's sake. Who really cares anyway, am I right? They give Hulk King a dumb, and I mean really dumb looking transformation, somehow making She-Hulk look good by comparison. Yeah, come at me, bro! <laughs> oh no, people, just... Why? How did you think this was a good idea? Suddenly Titania appears. Hulk King attacks Jen, but Abomination saves her. Then, suddenly Smart Hulk appears, and begins to have a misunderstood fight with Abomination. All the while, Jennifer is talking to the camera about how wild and messy everything is. Then the video suddenly cuts to the Disney Plus menu screen, implying that the audience is tuning out because of how shit everything is, which is actually kind of funny, but also kind of annoying, since they're purposely making their show worse for the sake of a joke. Besides, if anyone was going to tune out, they wouldn't have waited this long. However, Jennifer bursts out of her own show as She-Hulk, and breaks into the Marvel Assembled series. Marvel Assembled is their behind-the-scenes show. I feel like I have to mention that because most people probably don't even know it exists. Wow, that bad CGI never gets old. She walks around Marvel Studios, and... Oh, come on. Don't give yourself a cameo. You're not Stan Lee. At least they reveal the faces of the show's true villains. Now this next bit is perplexing. She-Hulk begins haggling the writers for making a bad finale. She is correct. It's bad. Then she mocks the writers for having the villain steal her blood. Also true, there are too many mirror villains. However, the writers insist that this is just how superhero stories go, and they better be careful with what they say, because this is getting tone deaf real quick. She-Hulk wants them to do things their own way, but the writers say that this is the story that Kevin wants. Okay, then I want to talk to Kevin. <laughs> no one talks to Kevin. Kevin's value is immeasurable mm -hmm. okay you'll never even get close mm -hmm. to him true. i would murder you to protect kevin this is all strangely self-aware these idiot writers made a stock cliche finale just for the sake of needing a finale implying that they really don't have any direction or ideas for this show then they unanimously praise and worship kevin no doubt because saying any less would cost them their jobs i don't know if i should be mad or amused by this development this bit would be way more enjoyable if the show was actually good until the finale but it's not so I choose anger. They are aware that the current way of doing things sucks, but they still just make the same old shit anyway. This isn't just the worst Marvel show, this is one of the worst shows I've ever seen, period. So for them to have the audacity to self-deprecate like this at the end is a new low I couldn't have imagined possible. It's also interesting that the head writer sits quietly in the corner, while someone who looks just like her does all the talking. Hmm, let's see. Yep, there it is. She's cast as writer Jessica. What's the matter? Can't act well enough to play yourself? She-Hulk then leaves to confront Kevin, but security is called, so they have a lame fight. Her CGI looks even worse in this real-world setting. She then makes it to a Matrix-like TV room, where Kevin is revealed to be a soulless machine. Are these people just fully aware of how far they've fallen? Is that what's going on here? Kevin agrees to talk with her, but only if she stays in her human form, so that they can save money. You are very expensive. Oh. Sure. But wait until the camera is off you. The visual effects team has moved on to another project. Yikes. I don't think you guys want to be making jokes like that right now. Kevin refuses to let her make changes because... It's my show. Incorrect. It's K-E-V-I-N's show. Kevin just told the titular character of this show that it is in fact his show and not hers. I couldn't think of a more accurate way to describe the current state of the MCU. This is taking tone deaf to a whole new level said that Marvel movies all end the same way. Wait, who's saying that? The problems are much more complex than just similar endings. That sounds like a criticism that someone would make if they hadn't watched any of the films. I don't like Marvel movies. They're all the same thing. Perhaps this is a result of following some unwritten rule that you have to throw a bunch of plot and flash and a whole blood thing that seems super suspiciously close to Super Soldier Serum. Yes. Plot would be good in a show. What else would you do if not plot? That's like everything a show is. By Flash, do you mean superheroes actually using their powers in a meaningful way? Because yeah, that would be nice. Why else would you give your character superpowers? It's similar to the Super Soldier Serum, because that's what it's supposed to be, you fucking idiots. Well, in WW2, they initiated a sub-program for biotech force enhancement. Yeah, Super Soldier. So this Dr. Banner was trying to replicate the serum they used on me? A lot of people were. You were the world's first superhero. Banner thought gamma radiation might hold the key to unlocking Erskine's original formula. Didn't really go his way, did it? Not so much. Jennifer complains that the flashy climax is taking away from the story about her life falling apart as she learns to balance being both Jen and She-Hulk. 
this meta stuff is strange, because what she said is all true, but this meta stuff itself is also derailing the story, and the more time we spend here, the less time we get to explore how Jennifer deals with her problems. You are actively derailing your story to yell at people for derailing your story. And this bit drags out for way too long. It takes up nearly 10 minutes of the show's runtime. It should probably last less than one minute if you want to use it effectively. But since there is no show, we need to watch her walk around and talk forever, wasting so much precious time for what could have been this show's one good episode. Jennifer eventually persuades Kevin to make changes, and proceeds to actively ruin her own show. She retcons Hulk King into not stealing her blood, because... Can we not do Todd gets Hulk powers? Like, the powers aren't the villain. He is. That statement is pretty much true in every story. You haven't made a point here. His villainous goals, shallow as they were, were to steal powers. You've just taken that away and made him an incomplete character with no purpose. She retcons Hulk's return, stating that it should be saved for the next movie. Man, they just hate this character so much. She retcons Blonsky's fake apology into a real one, because characters just don't matter and there is no show here. She requests that the setting be changed to daytime, because nighttime finales are cliché. You're late to the party on that one. You would know that if you actually watched the movies. She then wishes for Daredevil to return. Oh, would not mind seeing Daredevil again. A woman has needs. Historically, we've been light in that department. I'm calling bullshit on that last comment. She then sits down to rant about how daddy issues are an overused cliché, even though that's not even a problem with this show, so who cares? This leads her into rambling until Kevin finally cuts her off, and sends her back to her show. There is so much wrong here that needs to be called out, but I'll save it for the end. We cut back to the show where Hulk King is already being arrested. We jump from her learning who the main villain is, straight to him already being taken into custody. Riveting stuff. This is the change we needed. I'm so glad you nuked the ending of your own show, so that you could do absolutely nothing with the story. Jennifer confronts him, and it seems like she'll hit him, but instead she simply states that she'll see him in court. This is presented as some sort of character moment, but it's just nothing. She's supposed to be learning to embrace She-Hulk, but this is just her being normal. She would have said the exact same thing at the start of the show. Her character hasn't changed at all. And then we will find them, and we will destroy them. By any and all means. Legally. I said by any and all means. No, I am going to sue them for- I guess it counts as growth on some level, since she's not beating on someone who's helpless to fight back. A better show would have him be faced with the law, but then he uses his newfound powers to escape, forcing Jennifer to rely on the She-Hulk form in order to keep him in custody. With her learning that she can use her powers in order to make sure that people who think they're above the law can stay confined to it. Daredevil pretty much already does something similar in his own show, and we already have more than enough Hulks, but if this show has to get made, this is a better way to do it. Suddenly, Daredevil literally drops drops out of the sky so that she can sleep with him some more. She then talks to Blonsky as he agrees to 10 more years of prison for violating his parole. He soullessly agrees to it since she made Kevin strip him of any agency and free will. Later we cut to Matt Murdock being haggled by Jennifer's family. It's hard to care though since everything is a meaningless pile of nothing now. Suddenly... Bruce returns. For real, I guess. And apparently he has a full-grown son. Oh! <laughs> It seems like that should be a big deal. A whole movie could be made just about that. But nothing matters, so who cares? We just need more Hulks. People like Hulks. Can't get enough Hulks. We then cut to an interviewer confronting She-Hulk about her upcoming trial with Hulk King. She says a bunch of cliche stuff, then says she'll come after him as both a lawyer and a superhero, as if that means anything. That was the natural progression of her story, before they annihilated it. But that's where the episode ends, with a post credit scene of Wong breaking Blonsky out of prison. Again. And they both break the fourth wall. Yeah. You got sucked into another show, didn't you? We're really in an era of big TV. So I guess anyone can just do that now. Let's talk about the phrase, having your cake and eating it too. It means to do or have two good things at the same time that are impossible to have at the same time. Here are some examples of where that phrase could be applied. Being mad that your show is ruined, then actively ruining your show. Getting rid of the Hulk, because having him just spawn out of nowhere is ridiculous. Then have Daredevil ridiculously spawn out of nowhere. And then the Hulk just shows up anyway. Avoid needing to use any superpowers. Then proudly proclaim to be a superhero. Make a joke about how the effects team moved on to another project, while forcing them to tirelessly labor over making your dumb robot body. Learning gratitude for the things you lost, while being ungrateful for the people you have. Making a self-aware bad ending for your show, then replacing it with a far worse ending. The list goes on, but here's the point. There were a lot of ways that this show could have ended, but this is probably one of the worst options that they could have picked from. This is almost the antithesis of good writing. They bash and criticize all the cliche tropes that superhero finales have, while not understanding why they exist in the first place. They 
changes they made aren't for the better, they are simply different for the sake of being different. But when you do that, all you get is Halo 4. Give me that chip. No. Superheroes often come with life lessons hidden within their stories. If I have a great power, am I compelled to use it responsibly? If the world is getting worse around me, should I change with it? Or should I plant myself like a tree and refuse to budge? Is justice blind for those above the law? And so on. Some of the best villains often stand for the opposite of what these heroes live for, and they desire to impose an opposite ideology onto the world. To say it's all just Flash is just lazy and ignorant. The Avengers battle Ultron because they agree that flawed but different perspectives are greater than lifeless perfection. Hydra represents controlled world order that clashes with Steve Rogers' value for American freedom. Venom represents irresponsible power. When you put all these deep, dynamic characters and their stories in the proper context, then you can have a grand final battle in each one and still find ways to make it interesting every time. But if you don't get that context, then it will all seem the same to you. And at the end of the day, it's just cool to see super-powered people fight in interesting ways. To try and correct or change that is to fix something that isn't broken. When it comes to She-Hulk, the writers have such a problem with the finale because there is no context to provide. And there is no show. She-Hulk doesn't represent anything. She doesn't do anything. You can't make an opposing villain because there's nothing to oppose. He just hates her because he's supposed to, and the finale's only here because the show needs to end at some point. She is a superhero lawyer, yet she spends the entire finale doing neither of those jobs. She loses everything, sits around for a while, then erases it all, and then it ends. Having this over-the-top meta swerve is an interesting idea, but it would probably fit better as a one-off joke, rather than taking up an entire third of your episode. This thing just goes on, and on, and on. And the only real takeaway is that it makes the whole show feel like nothing matters. Have a villain? Just take his powers and arrest him off screen. Is the love interest leaving? Not anymore. Having drama with Blonsky? No worries. She'll just have Kevin lobotomize him. It's the exact same problems that multiverses and time travel bring to their stories. Any rules or stakes that have been previously established are now removed. What if Josh returns for season 2? Well, Jen could just ask Kevin to erase him. What if Bestie got a terminal illness? Well, what else would you do except ask Kevin to heal her? Kevin Feige has literally become the god within the MCU. If you don't like where your story is going, pray to Kevin to make it better. It's pointless to make theories for what the next season might bring, because anything and everything could change in a blink with no logic or reasoning whatsoever. The Hulk King saga was one of the largest setups that the show had to offer, and they just erased it like it was nothing. Jennifer was finally becoming a compelling character after facing heavy loss, but then everything just seemed to snap back into place off screen. It was a great chance for her character to grow and change. But instead of that, she pulled a Karen and demanded to speak with the manager. She Hulk. I'm here to see Kevin. It's urgent. Typical. I'll wrap this up with a couple questions from Marvel's higher-ups. Do you like this character? Do you want your female lead to succeed? Do you want more money? If the answers to any of those are yes, then why don't you put more effort in? Why don't you take your job seriously and work for a living? Why don't you at least try to care, instead of doing the bare minimum? I know you could do better. You know you could do better. And so does everyone else. Try to make a season two. Try to keep going down this path. We'll see where you end up. With that all said, I hope you enjoyed my reviews for this series. They were as fun to make as they were painful. But with that all behind us, how about I take a moment to lay out a roadmap for this channel's future. I have a full movie review in the works. That'll be released in the coming weeks. I also have plans to cover a wide variety of topics, from full films to specific characters. Many videos will be about Marvel, but I also intend to cover other franchises as well, whenever they're relevant. And I'll have a few surprises mixed in here and there. This show might be over, but this channel is just getting started. Stay tuned for great things to come, and thanks for showing this much support this early on. Speaking of, consider it. <laughs>